Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Mercy for Mankind. Now we've all seen the propaganda. There's no word in English. There's no word in Spanish. There's no word in Arabic to describe the foul things that have been said about the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. We are on this journey to support Muhammad. Huda TV has raised a campaign and we want you, the people at home, to join in in this campaign. We've been talking about humility. We've been talking about many things on this programme, which brings us to be the best of creation. We are Muslims. Tonight we are talking about faithfulness. We are talking how to be faithful. What does it mean? How can we be faithful? Look in this day and age. We have many things going on. Can any one person in this time, day and age, be faithful to one person? Does anybody know what the word faithfulness means? Well, let's find out tonight. We want to find the truth. And who better to guide us apart from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Dear viewers, we are all caught up in this dunya. We are all caught up in the latest technology, the latest iPhone, the latest gadgets. We must have the latest, if you're a doctor, call me doctor, I'm a professor. None of this actually matters. What matters are the things that we're discussing tonight, the things of faithfulness. Here joining me in the studio, we have two very special guests. We have Sheikh Zain al -Din Johnson. Salaam alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. Thank you for joining us in the studio today. It's a pleasure, brother. And we also have a very good friend of ours, which is um, the brother, Mohammed Hamza, all the way from the American University in Cairo. Salaam alaikum, Mohammed. Alaikum salam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us in the studio. It's my pleasure. I guess, brother, I brought you in today for your um, answers. We want to hear your voice as as you know as a young person we want to hear your voice how the prophet muhammad salam has helped you in your life your everyday life sheikh hamza i'm going to start off sorry sh sorry sheikh i'm going to start off sheikh zain by asking you something very specific i'm not going to ask you any questions i'm just going to mention one name which is khadija bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah rabbil alameen والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين uh, brother rafi brother muhammad uh, brothers and sisters throughout the world the last week or so as rafi mentioned uh, we have been talking about different topics that are talking about the beautiful manners of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these manners that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had is not just for us to talk about. In fact, it is for us to implement so that we can become better human beings throughout this life. We can improve ourselves. Definitely. That's what it's about, improving. Mm. And tonight we're talking about wafa. In Arabic it is called wafa, mm. which is uh, faithfulness or loyalty of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You mentioned the word Khadija radiallahu anha. And we will be starting with Khadija radiallahu anha talking about the marriage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Khadija. Mm -hmm. Before I mention, we just, who is Khadija radiallahu anha? I will mention this because the attack that these people made, I, I won't even call them people, these degenerates, these, this attack that they made on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was not only on, the belov on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu but a very big part of this attack was on our beloved mother, Khadija, because she is our mother, the mother of believers, exactly. Khadija radiallahu anha. And Khadija radiallahu anha was of the noblest, noblest women of the tribe of the Quraysh. Mm -hmm. And she was a wealthy, beautiful woman. She was known for her beauty and her style. And Khadija radiallahu anha chose the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after learning about his manners mm. and the way he dealt with people, that she chose him. She chose him for marriage and they became married and they stayed married 
for the next 25 years. Exactly. The next 25 years. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Well, first, let's talk about Khadija and her faithfulness to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam received the message, the message from the malaika, from the angel, that Khadija, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, first of all, he became frightened. He thought that maybe he was becoming crazy or something was going to happen to him or something. Okay. And Khadija radiallahu anha uh, told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this very beautiful advice and that is that your Lord will never ever desert you. You are a person who gives money to the poor, gives charity to the poor Subhanallah. and you help the needy <coughs> and you help the orphans and you even help the dog who is thirsty. You even give water to dogs who are thirsty mm. that your Lord will never desert you. And these words were something that helped the Prophet Sallallahu realize that it was him who was chosen to carry this message of Islam throughout the world. Later, Khadija radiallahu anha stayed with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu stayed with him through the hard times. Khadija didn't see the, the, the good times after Hijrah. She only saw the times in Mecca. In, in Mecca. Let's bring, let's bring Muhammad into this, um, brother, brother, because I, I want to um, get your insight in this, Muhammad. Obviously, you're a young person and, and you, you've been brought up a Muslim. How mm. has this been implemented in your life? What has the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, done for you to enable you to be a better Muslim? Well, it started uh, by t um, learning not to cheat when I was a student. Mm. So uh, my parents taught me not to cheat uh, and cheating uh, they, they taught us as, as it's being haram. So uh, this uh, was the first lesson I learned about uh, loyalty uh, from our religion, yes. from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Yes. So we, we learned uh, when we were young not to cheat in, 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 in exams and in, in, in our daily, in our daily uh, lessons exactly. and, and uh, as, uh, quizzes and stuff like this. So uh, this was the first implementation of uh, loyalty and faithfulness of the Prophet, peace be upon him. That, that's great, Muhammad. I think, Sheikh Zain, we're talking about, you know, Khadija and how um, through the stages of her life, she was so loyal. And, uh, you know, how Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, chose and they chose each other to be married. It, it's a, an amazing story. It's an amazing story. And we've just heard from the brother, Muhammad, that even at an early age, he he learned how to, you know how to be loyal, not to cheat in exams. It's it's amazing. It's, it really is. That's right, brother. I mean, we're talking about Khadija radiallahu anha, who, in fact, uh, sacrificed her life for mm -hmm. Islam after after she accepted the message. She was the first person to accept the message. Sure. The very first person, and she stayed with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi even living in the desert for two years in the hard times when the, when the Muslims were expelled from Mecca and were forced to live in the desert. And Khadija radiallahu anha lived there and it quite possibly that was what led to her death very soon after. Yes. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was also loyal to Khadija radiallahu anha. He never forgot Khadija radiallahu anha. First of all, the Prophet sallallahu in the 25 years that they were married, around about, that the Prophet ﷺ never took a second wife. He never took a second wife when he was married to Khadija radiallahu anha. And this is through his loyalty and his love to Khadija radiallahu anha. Brother, you're mentioning, you know, a second wife. Um, and they're all saying, you know, Prophet Muhammad was married more than once. And, you know, we are allowed to marry four women in Islam. So it's amazing to find out the loyalty and the, it, it, it's almost, you know, the, the utmost loyalty you can have to, to put that person before anything, apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was the practice of the Arabs to marry mm. a hundred wives. Yes. They would marry many. But in that time, the Prophet ﷺ chose not to marry upon uh, Khadija radiallahu anha. Subhanallah. Another situation where the Prophet ﷺ was very loyal to Khadija. Well, we can see he was loyal throughout his whole life, he mm. faithful throughout his whole life to Khadija. And one of these situations was when the son-in-law of Khadija was caught in the Battle of Badr. He was fighting for the mush mushrikeen, for okay. the polytheist. And he was captured and taken prisoner. 
And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, doing a fidya, like uh, asking for money to, to in exchange for the prisoner. Right. Okay, for the, all the prisoners. Yeah. And they sent some something for this prisoner in specifically, okay. who was the, 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 the son-in-law of Khadija. In fact, it wasn't the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu the daughter of Khadija, because she was actually married before the Prophet Sallallahu And this, this person, who was a disbeliever, mm. sent a necklace that was sent to the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi as fidya for this, this person. And the Prophet Sallallahu had actually seen that necklace. It was given by Khadija to her daughter. And that, when that necklace came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he held it in his hands, he began to weep. And he began to weep. And the family of the Prophet Sallallahu his children who, who, who had been with Khadija radiallahu anha, also began to weep just in remembrance mm. of Khadija radiallahu anha. SubhanAllah. Sheikh Zain, you know, it, it's fascinating to hear this story. You know, we have done programs before and we are on a quest to show the truth about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And we're, we're talking about everything tonight, about faithfulness. We've talked previously about humility. We've talked about many things on this show. All these things, brothers, all these things are connected how to be a Muslim. I, w I, want, to ask, I want to ask you a specific question, Sheikh, because you, know, you are a revert to Islam. And alhamdulillah, God gave us th this opportunity to be a, a good Muslim. How does it make you feel to know all these things that are happening, the faithfulness, humbleness, everything we have from the best of the, the people, Muhammad, how does it make you feel to have this messenger teaching you these things, teaching you all of these things, how to be a better person? Brother, the, the, the gift of Islam is the greatest gift. Even if I had nothing else in my life, it would be enough for me. Just to be given Tawheed, to be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be giving Islam. Yeah. And through Islam, it has helped myself to become who I am today. I was not like this before. And what I tried to do with my life was to everything that I read and heard about the Prophet wasallam, I tried to implement this into my life. And I can remember even my mother, uh, my dear mother, who, who is not Muslim still, but inshallah Allah guide her. Inshallah. I can remember that at the beginning, uh, I did not tell her that I was Muslim, mm. but I began to practice what the Prophet taught us on how to deal with our parents until she saw the change in myself and she saw a big change in myself and eventually when I told her she was very surprised but she was happy and said well this is this must be what has made you better than what you were of, of course now Sheikh again I went to the streets because this is a, a huge campaign and I asked a certain question Dear, dear viewers I asked I went to the streets and I asked a, a question to, to the public and I asked did this actual propaganda that's been happening about the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, make you more determined to tell the truth? Stay tuned, let's look at the clip very shortly. <laughs> No, I don't think so. This is not proper proper reaction of Muslims and we should uh, avoid these kind of reactions. No, I mean the, to kill innocent people that didn't do any, that were not involved in this movie, um, it's, not, it's not correct. I mean to make protest, it's okay, but killing innocent people that didn't, they weren't, they didn't do anything, they were, they were not involved in this movie, it's not correct. Yeah, a little bit. People are angry for this, but some of them think that it's uh, just a uh, provocation and no need to go to the uh, American uh, embassy. Welcome back. Well, I'm asking you, the viewers at home, the same question. Has this propaganda made you more determined to tell the truth about Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. 
Right now, we're going to open the phone line, so I'm expecting the phone lines to be jammed after I give you the telephone numbers, which are 0020-238-555-248 or 249. Again, the telephone numbers 0020-238-555-248 or 249. And you can certainly Skype us at Hudder underscore TV. That's Hudder underscore TV. So I'm expecting the viewers to participate and call me because this is very, you know, wanting an answer from, from our dear viewers. Now, I'm going to start with, with you, Brother Mohammed. We're talking tonight about, you know, the faithfulness of Allah. And I asked you before, okay, how has Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him, taught you to be a better Muslim? And I, I, I want to find out, you know, your opinion. How do you think people of today can put into practice faithfulness because it's not easy. It's not easy to be faithful. Let's face it, we're, we're all from the West. It's very easy for myself to do bad things. It's very easy for me to go and um, have a, a, a relationship outside of my marriage. It's very easy for me to go ahead and, and you know, have a second job. All these things are implemented. I find for myself that the only thing stopping me is the faithfulness that's been taught by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why is it so difficult for people to, to understand the faithfulness? As I told you, uh, we were taught this since we were kids mm. by the message our parents gave us when they said uh, don't cheat and that God is uh, seeing you and God is watching you. So we, we, we grew up and we have in mind that God uh, is, 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 is watching us and that everything we're doing, uh, he, he knows about it. Okay. So this uh, g grew up with us and it's the, the real reason uh, that makes you faithful, that you know and believe that God is watching you and that he knows what you're doing. Sure. So, so it grew with us. So after that, when you're in your work, you, you, you become very uh, uh, faithful and you look uh, at uh, what is, is, is you're told to do and you should uh, uh, try to do it and don't For and sure. after that when you get married it's the same thing you become faithful to your wife because God knows okay. what you're doing and with your children it's the same so it goes it's, it's something you were taught since you were a kid and then you grew up with you in all your, uh, your life and that's because uh, the Prophet peace be upon him uh, taught us this and because uh, of the belief that God is watching us Okay, Mohammed, you know, this is great, and I, you know, I really respect this answer, you know, and it's very true. I'm sure Sh Sheikh Zain will agree with me. However, let's take a look at the bigger picture and talk about Shaitan, because Shaitan's always whispering in your ear. Yes. He's always whispering and saying, do this. It, no one's watching, Nobod nobody's concentrating. So why is it people that are non-Muslim in the West consider us to be so strict? The, maybe because they think that... Uh, uh, we should live our life and we should enjoy our time and it's, uh, it's uh, why are you doing this? Why are you uh, putting these uh, barriers and putting these uh, strict rules to your lives when you can enjoy them? Subhanallah. Well, let's go to the phone line right now. I believe we have a Skype call. Alia from Pakistan. Asalaamu Alaikum, Alia. Wa Alaikum Thanks for calling tonight, oh. Alia. Um. Yes, go ahead, sister. Hello. Hello, salam alaikum. Go ahead, Alia. I Aliyah. just want to share one thing. Wa alaikum as salam. Wa, wa alaikum as salam. I, I would like to share that we should practice more sunnah, more sunnah in ev our everyday life. Show people what our teaching is. Rather than doing most of the things we do. I'm, I'm really so sorry, sister Ali. I believe the line is a bit, is a bit you know, breaking up here so I do hope you do try again there we had a you know a Skype call from sister Ali unfortunately it didn't go through so brother I, I was asking you Mohammed uh, about you know how everything's working uh, in the West because people may say Muslims are so strict we have no fun but how how do we manage our lives for example because we we are the best of creation Islam teaches us everything. Would you like for yourself to be one of the, among one of those people who are not faithful? What, do, what would it mean to you to be not faithful? Well, I, I, I told you right now that people 
uh, are faithful in, in different areas. Mm -hmm. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, t taught us to be faithful in all areas. In the West, they're faithful in their work. They, 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 they do their b because there is a camera or there is, uh, there is their, their boss will, will know about it. Uh, here, uh, Muslim in Muslim countries, people might be faithful with, their, with, with, with a lot of areas that the Prophet taught, taught them, exactly. like uh, uh, faithfulness with their wives, maybe. Uh, Alhamdulillah, most Muslims are. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but in their works and, and their work and stuff like this, they, may, they maybe not do what the Prophet told them to do. I believe you've hit the nail on the head there, Muhammad, because I think what you're trying to say is they have it here. Yes. They have it in their heart, which is something very, very, very huge, the viewers, because if you do not have it here, it doesn't matter. Because if you have cameras watching you, you you're only doing it for what? Just to, to satisfy your employer. But who, do we sh who should we satisfy? Our employer or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? SubhanAllah, you know, that, that's great. So, Sheikh Zain, I, I want to bring another question in to you here. What faithfulness, let, let's use another name, did Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, have for his mother? For his mother, uh, <coughs> first of all, uh, the, the mother of the Prophet uh, died when he was a very yes. uh, at a very young age. And even so, even so, and she obviously died before uh, before Islam, uh, mm -hmm. before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi received the message. But even so, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam visited the grave of his mother, mm -hmm. and he cleaned the grave and, and visited it. However, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala did not allow him to make istighfar for his mother, to ask for repentance for his mother. So, unfortunately. Uh, his mother did not die on Islam and it, she, Prophet Sallallahu was not able to, although he would have liked to, but yes. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did not allow him to do that. And this is a very important point uh, that we are not, it is not permissible for us to ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to forgive somebody who has died making shirk with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is not our right. It is Allah's right to punish those who die on shirk. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi even still, even still after that, he, he visited the grave and he cleaned the grave and looked after the grave, but he did not make istighfar for his mother. It, it, it's fascinating there, there, Sheikh. You know, you've picked up on something very specific. His mother died a non-Muslim. So we're, we're talking about, you know, the Prophet Muhammad was revealed in Islam many years after his mother died. And he, he tried his best, I believe. You, you know more than myself there, Sheikh. So how can we show the world today that Islam is the truth? All these things that we are being taught by the Prophet Muhammad, uh, you know, are, are being taught, taught by the Prophet. But before we do so, let's take a telephone call for, from a sister from Nigeria. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. alaikum, Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. Salaam Thank you for joining us tonight. Go ahead, sister. Yeah, I want to add something about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Go, go ahead and ask the sheikh. Oh, she wants to add yeah. something. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was abused by yeah. people, he made dua to Allah and said, "Oh Allah, forgive my people, for they do not know." He was severely abused several times, but he forgave them and gave them gifts in return. So I want to quickly say that. In this type of situation, we shouldn't insult the people back or do something. Did, did you Hello, get Islam? that? Uh, Hello? Sisters. I'm sorry, the line is very crackling. Yeah, we're still here, sister. And we didn't get the last bit of the question. No, she's not making questions. Question she's it's making the comment. comment. Yes, we didn't hear the last bit of the, the, the comments. I'm, I'm so sorry. If you retry, I, I believe the sister was making a comment. Unfortunately, the line wasn't very mm. clear. Hopefully, she was talking mm. about reaction to the to the uh, yes the reaction. sickness that happened. Mm. Uh, the re our reaction. How should we react? And she was mentioning. Uh, she was talking about that that she thinks we should make dua for the people to uh, uh, for that Allah guides them. And it I it is very sad. And uh, it is very sad for, for that those people. You can see clearly that the people who made, or I don't even like to call them people, but the, the mm. things that made that movie, mm -hmm. it is clear 
from that that they know nothing about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Exactly. They know nothing about what we've been talking about here. Exactly. And you mentioned earlier about uh, just before the, the phone call about what we can do and how we can show the world. The way we can show the world is through our actions. Once I was at a, a, dawah, uh, a dawah center, or I used to work in a dawah center, and uh, all these old ladies came, and uh, the sheikh was teaching them about Islam and telling them about Islam. And one old lady, she said, this is, uh, this is very nice, but it's all on paper. She said, I, I haven't seen this from many Muslims. And this is very sad. We, we have the golden opportunity. We have the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us the way, brothers and sisters. Shown us the way exactly. on how to live. How we can give the perfect example. And we are neglecting this? Subhanallah. Do we not think that, uh, that we will be punished if we do not show these people the right way? This yeah. is the way that we, we need. And we need to react in a way that is not going to harm Islam. We need to react in a way that is firm without doubt because mm -hmm. we will not accept this. But at the same time, uh, we need to re react in a way that is going to show Islam for what it really is. Of course. Let's take a telephone call from, I believe, Farouk from Algeria. Salaam alaikum, Farouk. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Go ahead, brother. What, what, what would you like to say, Brother Farouk? I want to say uh, to our Arab and Muslim leaders, why, why have not denounced the film official? Uh, I am sorry uh, for my language, but uh, if you can, uh, you give me a chance uh, to speak in, in uh, French, I will uh, speak with you very well. I have uh, a lot of things to say uh, to our leaders, why? My question for these leaders. Thank you so much for the, the comment there, no Farouk. I appreciate your comment. Thank you so much, Brother Farouk. I, I believe the brother was actually saying, you know, why? You know, wh what's happening? Why can, can, can we, how can we stop that? Yeah, he was, he was basically saying uh, why our leaders haven't uh, condemned it or why our leaders haven't said it. But many... Many of the leaders have, uh, uh, the, leaders, uh, the leader of Egypt stood up in the United Nations mm. and told them clearly that this would not be accepted. Mm. And many of the leaders have spoken out about this. And it is clear that it is not accepted. And we don't even, uh, it is clear from, th from those who believe, from those who believe sincerely that we will never accept such a thing. Exactly. But we are responding in a way that we are, we, we are actually bringing back this, what they have done, one of the person, one of the people who made this movie, he said he did it because he didn't want Islam to reach 10% in America, because if Islam reached 10%, then they could be a, a, quite a power in America. Well, let me tell you, my friend, well, you're not even my friend, but let me tell you that Islam will reach 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, that it doesn't matter what you do, what you do, it doesn't matter. Oh. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give victory to this deen, whether you like it or not. Of course. Whether you like to make movies and slander us, or whether you do not, that Islam will, will, will continue. It is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything will continue. Let's take a very quick telephone call from Nigeria. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa Good evening. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Yeah, I'm very fine. Thank you for joining us. Go, go ahead, brother. Yes, I want to comment about the, the blasphemy that was, was thrown about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, the, I, during the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet, I think in an, in an hadith, he said, for your faith to be complete, you have to love me more than you love your parents, more than you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Am I right, Sheikh? You're 100% right, brother. Now, if that is the case that before your faith is complete, you must love Prophet Sallallahu more than your parents, more than yourself. Now, after the, after the, the, the blasphemy, the theme has been told, in trying to show that you really love him more than you love your parents, more than you love yourself, people come out and, uh, and react and, and, uh, for, and react outside in turn 
the, the security forces are now killing them, destroying their properties, killing, wounding them, injuring, injuring them, shooting them. With, so how so how do we react? Uh, how do we show the world that what is done? We are actually we are actually feeling bad about it. So what is the way? Since we are trying to react, the security forces are shooting us, are repelling back on us. That is my my own question. It's a, it's a very good question. Very good question. Thank you so much for for your question there. I guess you will answer that straight after the break. We're just going to take a quick break. Stay tuned, don't go anywhere. Salam alaikum. Why, righteous companions? It is Islam that given us the sense of dignity. I love all of them in a way that you cannot imagine. That Umar ibn al-Khattab would say something and the Quran would come down matching what he said. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Just compare, compare what you did for Islam with just one of them. So, one. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? As the firefighter uses what to control fire? Water or rocks? Now, these two teams go head to head on pulling the blue rope. Now, if one person goes over this line right here, the other team loses. Very simple rules. This challenge is worth five points. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Fun is for everyone. So get ready to have some fun. Check out these cool competitions between kids. It's important to have fun, and it's also important to be a good sport. So tune in to Fun for Everyone. You don't want to miss it. What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim ma? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim ma? Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Mercy for Mankind. Let me remind you of the telephone numbers, which are 0020 238 or 249. And the Skype details is Huda underscore TV. Let's get right back into it and start with a telephone call from Rabia from Sudan. Salaam alaikum, sister. Sorry, salaam alaikum, brother. Salaam alaikum, sister Rabia. Hello, salaam alaikum. Walaikum salaam. Thank you for joining us tonight, sister. Yes, it's Kadia. Um, I want to quickly say some few things about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then recite a prayer. I need to pray first, inshallah. 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 Go ahead, sister. Inshallah. First of all, on that day when everyone will be saying nafsi, 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 myself, 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 the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be saying ummati, 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 my umma, my umma, my umma. Yes. He taught me how to eat, how to sleep, how to live. He gave us a perfect example for living. He gave us the perfect lifestyle. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was so forgiving that he forgave a Jewish woman that tried to kill him. Wow, what's a great man. SubhanAllah. I, I believe the, the call dropped there, um, Rabia. I'm so sorry. I hope you do try again to, to call in. So we have Akeem. Asalaamu Alaikum, Akeem from Ghana. Wa Alaikum Asalaamu Wa Rahmatullah, Sheikh. 
Walikum salam. God Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala bless all of you there and everyone there at Huda. Thank you so much. Allah, we pray to Allah to give Islam the opportunity to at least let every human being know how Islam is through Huda. May Almighty Allah bless you. Thank you. With what has happened now, so far as I believe there may be some technical fault. I do apologise. Um, all I can say, Akeem, is please try again. Please give us a quick call back. Brothers, let's start with um, the brother um, Nasir from Nigeria. He was saying, actually, how can we deal with this situation in a positive way without violence, without the negativity which people have been doing as non-Muslims towards the Muslims? We want to show Islam is the best. We want to show the people that Islam is correct. We want to show the people that we are peaceful. We want to show the people that without Islam, we have nothing. So let's, let's go straight to Sheikh Zain and find out. Okay, let's take a deep breath for a minute. Let's take a deep breath, everybody. And this is a question that's being asked a lot. What should we do? How should we react? We should react, we should think about what would the Prophet do in this situation? Exactly. What would the Prophet do in this situation? Do you think that the Prophet would go and start killing uh, the Christians that live in his country or the, 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 the people who were staying in the country that were not Muslims? This is not what the Prophet ﷺ would do. What the Prophet ﷺ would do would be to act in a way that was responsible, in a way that would give victory to Islam. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ, his whole life was about giving victory to Islam, giving victory to the religion of Islam in the world so that the people would be worshipping La ilaha illallah. A lot of the people in the world are ignorant. They are ignorant of what Islam is. They don't know what Islam is. They hear from their television sets that is firing arrows at Islam. Mm. They hear this from the other te television set that is firing arrows at Islam. But they've never met a Muslim. And this is what it's all about. You as a Muslim, brothers and sisters, are supposed to show Islam through your actions. And that's what we're going to do. That's how we're going to react. We're going to show Islam. Yeah, if we want to go out and protest, okay, that's fine. But do it behind the leaders, the Islamic leaders, under a system. We are not a people that just go off by ourselves and do whatever we like. No, we are a people who follow our scholars. The mm. scholars are the inheritors of the prophets. Exactly. They know what to do. So let's get behind them and let's uh, move with whatever decision they make. Some might decide that no, we're not going out. Okay, some might decide that. Exactly. And if they decide that, then that is for a reason. Exactly. Well, Sheikh, let's take a telephone call from Asma from the UAE. Salaamu Alaikum, Asma. Wa Alaikum Salaam, how are you? I'm, I'm doing fine, how's everything? Go ahead, sister. Alhamdulillah. Actually, what I want to say already, Sheikh uh, Johnson has said everything before <laughs> I want to speak about all these things. Sister, that, that's totally great, correct. go ahead. We, he is totally correct. Read your deen, you read your hadith, read Bukhari Sharif. You will understand what you want to do. Don't just simply look at the people and go behind them. You have e enough book. Read the books. I exactly. I exactly. Thank you. You're, you're more than welcome. Thank you so much. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your telephone call, sister. Sheikh, you know, we're having many telephone calls tonight, you know, which is very, I, I'm so grateful for these telephone calls because these are genuine Muslims calling up saying without the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu they would not be here with good manners. They would not be here with the faithfulness that we have, the, the humility and the humbleness and everything else that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us. This is why we're here and I, really it, it hurts my heart to, to have to make a programme to defend, to, to enlighten people about the most magnificent person that walked this earth. But we must do in this day and age. You know, we had a comment fr from, um, you know, Brother Nazir, and he was saying, and we just answered that question. L let's move on to um, Rabea, the sister Rabea from Sudan. You know, I, I think, you know, what, what she was trying to say, all the comments that you actually said, Shirk, that without him, he, he t uh, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, taught her how to eat. 
how to how to act in daily life. Let's bring Brother Muhammad in here because you mentioned as a child, you know, you were taught not to cheat in in exams. And how does it make you feel, as a Muslim, to to hear other Muslims saying these these positive comments? Do, 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 does it make you feel happy inside that you know? Without this person, this magnificent person up on the earth, we would not have manners. We would not be the best of creation. Well, I, I, I think uh, this is very, 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 uh, this makes me very happy for all this that's going on, mm -hmm. except the negative side of the people, uh, uh, what they did in the embassy and uh, or in the Libya mm -hmm. and they killed the ambassador. Yes. Th these negative uh, things, the, the, they are the thing that uh, I think it's, it's wrong. I think that is wrong. But uh, all this that is going on is very, 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 makes me very happy. But I think that in, uh, this should be uh, something th Muslims should add to this is that if they really love the Prophet, peace be upon him, they st should start learning more about him and start implementing his teachings in their lives. Th that I'm, saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying like uh, um, uh, uh, all Muslims are not doing this, but a lot of Muslims don't know a lot of the, the uh, uh, positive and a lot of the good manners that the Prophet ta taught us. That's what so we're here for tonight. So, so I, I, think, I think everyone on his own, if he really loves the Prophet, peace be upon him, he should start learning more about him and he should start implementing his teachings in his life and he should start telling others about this everyone in on his own yeah, you and, and you tell your friend in your work or in your uh, in your country and, uh, and and I tell my friend and and like this and first before we tell our, our, our colleagues or our people next to us or people close to us we should start learning more in order to have something to say and implement in ourselves and implement in our children and I think this is this is the the positive way of reacting to what happened to the prophet or what, what was said about the prophet peace be upon him and and and, and exactly. what happened. And I think also uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, really the real uh, po uh, the real way we can answer back the people who made this uh, movie because they wanted us they wanted to harm Islam by this. So by this way we make out of this the uh, benefit to Islam. Of course, you know, it's, it's a great point. Now, Sheikh Zain, I, I want to pick up on a point here because we've had many good comments tonight. However, let's talk now um, a little bit about the faithfulness of, uh, sorry, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon it, had towards his enemies. <coughs> Did he actually have faithfulness? Brother, the Prophet ﷺ taught us faithfulness throughout his life in every aspect. And one of those is with the enemies. Mm. If we look at when the believers made hijrah to Medina to Manawura, to the Medina of the Prophet ﷺ, a group of deviants, of enemies of Islam, became uh, in, in Medina. Okay? Mm. They came in Medina and they are the hypocrites. The hypocrites are actually more dangerous than the disbelievers. Very quickly, Sheikh, you know, some people may not know what hypocrites are. W what would you actually, how can you describe and, and what hypocrites are? Well, these types of hypocrites are those who show their Islam on the outside. They show that they're believers. They say that they're believers. They might even pray. But on the inside, their, their hearts are disbelief. Mm -hmm. They do not believe in Islam. Their goal is to destroy Islam. Mm -hmm. It was back then and it is today. Don't think that the hypocrites have finished. There will be a group and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about them in the Quran. They will be a group that continue as long as this ummah continues. Mm. There will always be those who are hypocrites trying to destroy Islam from within. Now these hypocrites, they were, oh, uh, they were trying to destroy Islam. One of them was the most famous one and that is Abdullahi bin Sulul. Mm. Abdullahi bin Sulul. And he was a very famous hypocrite. And he used to spread trouble throughout the ummah. Sometimes he would say things about the Prophet ﷺ to other people to try and turn the people against the Prophet ﷺ. Sometimes he would talk about the tribes to try and get the tribes to, to fight amongst each other. Basically backbiting. Backbiting, <coughs> namima. This is the evilest of his actions. In one case, in the Battle of Uhud, uh, this man, he actually convinced 300 people to leave the battle. To, to, to go and not even go in the battle out of their cowardness and he convinced them not to go in this 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 evil's man yes. okay also he convinced the people not to pay 
not to pay for, for uh, not to, to, to give charity for jihad, fi sabilillah, mm. not to give money for jihad. No, don't give any until the Prophet wins, he used to say. Now this man, eventually, he died. Okay, and he had a son who was actually a, a practicing Muslim. But from what we know, he was from the Sahaba, mm. his son. And his son asked the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Could he wrap, could he wrap his the, the shirt of the Prophet sallallahu Could he wrap his father in the shirt of the Prophet sallallahu Now, mind you, the Prophet sallallahu used to leave the munafiks. Mm. He never used to do anything because he used to think that if we kill them, then the people will think that Muhammad sallallahu is is killing his companions. So mm. he used to just let them let them go by and try to ignore them. Mm. Now this, the son of this man asked the Prophet Sallallahu can you wrap him in the shirt, in your shirt? Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't have a habit of saying no to people. He used to always say yes to people. So he said yes to this man. And he allowed the shirt of the Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to wrap uh, the father, this, this hypocrite. He wrapped the hypocrite in the shirt of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even... The son then asked, can you pray on my father and make istighfar for him, you know, and ask for mm. forgiveness for him? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got prepared. He, 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 got, he went down and got prepared to pray on top of this hypocrite. And he was about to, to raise his hands for, for the takbir, Allahu Akbar. And Umar radiallahu anhu, Umar came running down and he said, Ya Prophet of Allah, Ya Rasulullah. He said, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent us from praying on the hypocrites? The Prophet ﷺ said that we have been given a choice and I chose to pray on him. And I chose to pray on him. Mm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لهم أم لم لهم لا يغفر الله لهم. That if you make, uh, if you ask for repentance for them or you do not ask for repentance for them, that it doesn't matter because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never will never receive their repentance. Yes. And the Prophet ﷺ then prayed on top of this person. SubhanAllah. Prayed on top of this hypocrite. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the verse of the Quran that said that do not pray on any of them ever. SubhanAllah. Do not Shit. pray upon them ever and do not and do not stand above their graves. They are the people who disbelieved in Allah and his prophet. SubhanAllah, Sheikh, you know, it's very interesting. However, let's just take a telephone, a quick telephone call from Brother Noor from Yemen. Asalaamu As Alaikum, Brother. Asalaamu Alaikum. I believe the call may have dropped there. Please try and give us a quick call back, you know, Brother, if you're watching. Uh, we have a, um, Brother Hamza back from Nigeria. Asalaamu Alaikum, Hamza. Asalaamu Alaikum Hamza. I do believe, you know, we may be having some technical difficulties with the telephone calls. I do hope you give us um, a quick call back very shortly. Brother, you know, all these things that uh, we're talking about over these two weeks are fascinating and we're finding out, you know, basically how to live our lives. Let's share with the viewers, okay, we've talked about many things, but this topic tonight, faithfulness, and who is the best person to show us faithfulness, apart from Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. How does it make you feel inside when you know you are following in his um, path? Because, again, we come back to the very basics of Islam, we're coming back to the, the, the foundation, because without the foundation, there's, there's nothing else. People want to jump to the next level. People are so wound up in li life and um, they forget their religion. They forget why they're here. They forget the only reason we are here is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we, we have been blessed with something. People may say we have nothing. We have been blessed with the most, again, we have been blessed with them, the best thing on earth, which is Islam. Brother, we are part of now the brotherhood. We are part of a group which allows us for a better life in the future. So, Sheikh, how does it make you feel inside when you know that to the best of your ability, you are following in his rules? 
brother myself, I just try to make it to paradise. That is my goal in my life, inshallah. to make it to paradise. If I make it there, inshallah ta'ala, then I have succeeded in life. Inshallah. If I do not make it there, then I have failed in life. Because this is what I like, this is what I want. Mm. I want to reach paradise. Exactly. And the only way we can reach paradise is through following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and following what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, has taught us. But not only is it about paradise, also if when we follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we also benefit in this yes. world. Some people think that uh, just because the, if you, oh, this guy, he, he wants paradise, but he's living the, the, the worldly life. Uh, I'm so sorry to cut you off there, Sheikh. Are we just going to take a very quick telephone call before the end of the show? Okay. Um Amr from Egypt. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Wa Alaikum As Salaam. Welcome to the program. Go ahead, sister. Uh, yeah, Ikhul, I just wanted to remind you that um, uh, amidst this calamity, uh, we still have to be mindful that. I mean, there's been a lot of backlash against the brothers from the Muslims that claim that there was bad behavior. Let's not forget who incited this blasphemy. Uh, as the Sheikh said, these degenerates that, um, that continue to do so. Let, let's stay focused. Let's not get distracted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained this to happen, and this is a test. We're all going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and our Muslim sisters, even the weakest of them, are better than um, the Kafir. Yes, I I exactly, sister. Thank you so much for your call. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I'd just like to comment on that one, brother. Yes, exactly. Khair, sister, really. It's, it's a great... It is something that, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people have done, is the focus from the newspapers and stuff has switched from the criminals to the, the, to the victim. And then now the victims become the criminal, and the criminals becoming the victim. And this is not... Uh, what they did was a massive crime. And it is a crime that should not be let go. It is a crime that should be taken to the highest level. Exactly. And this, this has to be changed. The way that they rule their countries must be changed. So, because we don't, want, we don't need this type of stuff uh, attacking our religion. We do not attack your religion. So why do you attack our religion? Exactly. We do not attack that. We, to, we are people who discuss. We discuss things in the best manner diplomatic Sheikh unfortunately we've reached the end of the, uh, the the program I do hope we have another chance very shortly to resume our you know our dialogue I'd like to thank uh, Mohammed Hamza for joining us in the studio tonight thank and you. I'd also like to thank Sheikh Zain Aldine Johnson it's always a pleasure brother dear viewers we've been talking about faithfulness tonight I do hope you stop and think tonight about what it means to be faithful because we have to have it in our hearts to be faithful and always remember, we have to follow in the footsteps of uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So let's take a quick think before our next actions. And until next time, I'll leave you in the safe care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> رسول 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 يا وفي العهد